Adelphi's swarming with beetles now on BBC One. Front of house manager Katie Granwell has been called to investigate a problem in room 213. Oh, you're coming from that bed. Oh, God. There it is. A swarm of flying ants has checked in through an open window. Oh, it's on your legs! Oh, my legs! Oh, my legs! It is! <laughs> Until the ants are cleared, Katie will have one less room to put up 500 Beatles fans who are due to check in for the weekend. We, we play all the different periods, like the Beatles. And in Argentina, we play in a show with five parts. Japanese Beatles fan club is the biggest in the world. Is it really? Yeah, 80,000 members. The Adelphi is a host to Liverpool's annual Beatles convention. Over the next 48 hours, 32 look-alike bands from around the world are due to play in the hotel. Mr. Hondra, are you a big Beatles fan? I'm not a Beatles fan. You're not my, a job, be my job is Beatles. Your job is Beatles. What's your one. One yeah. of four. Okay, what's the name? Uh, I've got a picture. Can you say that again? It's the hotel's busiest weekend since the Grand National. I'll have to go up and find Dave on the floors. Operations manager Brian Birchall has been up since five on the early duty manager shift. I've had no water on the fifth and sixth floors from last night, this morning. So people have been getting showered down in the health club. But we've got to get it sorted out now because we've got 500 Beatles fans staying <laughs> over the weekend and they'll expect showers, the Japanese and Americans, and I mean, the English don't shower, but they do. Are we getting on? At least Brian has one less problem to hand over to the next duty manager. Come in. This is when you know you've lost it. <laughs> Happy anniversary, Ali. <laughs> Pretty bad when your husband leaves your anniversary card on your office desk, isn't it? Too busy. Has the duty manager checked the outside of the building done a walk round? Graffiti patrol. The graffiti patrol. I think you should go and do that now. For Eileen, the best thing about becoming general manager was not being duty manager anymore. But this weekend, she's forced to go back to a job she was promoted from over five years ago. I'm trying to pack in smoking. And this morning, I've been up since five o'clock. It's now quarter past 11 and I've had three cigarettes. And I usually smoke 60 a day, so I'm doing well. My that. dog goes on an oxygen mask when he comes to my house. And if he gives up, I'll... But the only thing is, I'm saving up at the gratis points. Oh, Brian. And I've only got 13... 100. 100, and I need 1,500 for me CD know. player. I know. Now Brian's handed over to Eileen. He's not due back on duty until tomorrow morning. Um, delayed flight. <laughs> I just had a call off service, Sarah, at service there in Manchester. She said once a cater for 326 people this evening. Um, I've got 126 rooms and I've said yes, basically. So I just want to know if we can feed them. Yeah, you can any time you I want, can. James. I can Any time you want. Right. I can't believe you're yeah. going home and there's a delayed possible <laughs> delayed flight. I don't know how. You, I don't know how you can do that. With a clear conscience. What about me? What about the case? I think you're lovely. Hey, <laughs> I can't believe you're going to go and leave me with this. I'm not. I'll go and try and get in touch with Chef. Oh, I hope it doesn't come. I'm too tired. Chef's unaware that he might soon be catering for 326 delayed holidaymakers on an unscheduled stopover. Brian needs to get his attention.
Brian's been hoping for a quiet night in. Sick of the pig, actually. Sick of the pig on a bacon slice. Mine come. I'm going to fix the plane myself. If the delayed tourists do turn up, the hotel will need every available bed. The computer lists room 115 as empty, but housekeeping has reported that it's full of belongings. There's no answer from the room, but the key's not here yet, so we need to know who's in the room. Urgently. Yeah, urgently. Okay. Okay, dog, love. At the end of the shift, if you still haven't spoken to him, I will need to pack his stuff up because it's on my shift and I can't afford a room not being paid, otherwise I'll have to pay it. I can't afford to do that at all. Hello. Hello, Chef, it's Brian. Hello. Listen, we've got a possibility of a delayed flight. No, I've just been told. Oh, have you just been told? I was trying to get in touch with you in the lounge. You know, walked past before. Oh, right. So, you know what? Don't want to look at you. <laughs> when I was doing the airplane impressions. <laughs> Yeah, but we'll, we've just rang them back, said they'll let us know in five minutes. Having closed the main kitchen for the day, Chef now needs to see what ingredients he has to rustle up supper for 326. Oh. You can open these fridge doors better than me. They have a knack, knack these scousers, you know, of undoing locks. I thought, you know, it must be in, in bone. Upstairs, Mark hasn't discovered the identity of the mystery guest, but has found something suspicious. Cannabis. Honestly. <laughs> Looks like anyway. My album. <laughs> Horrible. Brian, what are you doing? Tours might be coming. I mean the. I am flight. so disappointed with you. Four today, Barbara, from 60, come on. Yeah. But this isn't, this is a mild one. I'll be all right. So listen, are we getting the tour? We think so. By double locking the door, Mark ensures that the guest will have to contact reception on their return. The only key that'll open it now, I'm afraid, is the juicy managers. Ones. All right, thank okay. you. You make sure I get them back? Yeah, I'm back off. Why do I need to know all these things? What things? About back gates and phone boxes. Why do I need to know? Phone boxes? I don't know. I'm not having that. Do you want me to give it to you? No, we're sorry, don't leave us. I'm not having it. <laughs> That's 20. Yeah. Where's Paul that? Davis? Yeah. Brian's worst fears have been realised and his hopes of a quiet night at home dashed. Update, I'm staying. They're coming. I'm upset. Got no staff. We see how we fare. We have look-see. It's August and 28 degrees. Chefs found five turkeys to provide some unseasonal cheer. I've got to count off some turkey. Where's that fat bastard? Ian? How are you doing that? Just sock that up halfway, Matt. No, what are you doing there? You're making hard work for yourself, Matthew. I don't want you to do that. Don't f give me shit in your knob end. So, the towels. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go and check if I have enough set beds for Katie. All right, well, We need seven set beds. Oh, we'll have enough. Oh, yeah. We have got enough, actually, because we've checked them. We have got enough. Most of them are knackered. They are old. The springs are like digging into your back and that. Uh, By this time in the afternoon, Jana's the only housekeeper on duty. What name is it, What name is it, please? On the first floor, the mystery guest has now revealed himself. What name What's your name? Yeah, in the computer you see it's got, got this name as vacant. Mr. Mr. Wong. Yeah. Wang or Wang? Wang. Wang Yongsheng. W-A-N-G. W-A-N-G. Yeah. Did you change rooms last night? Yes. Ah, yeah. you yeah. changed from 548 yeah. to this room? Yeah, two rooms with our guy. Yeah. If he was a mystery sleeper, it would come back on myself. And I might have had to pay, you know, the room charge, which I can't afford to do. But I don't now. <laughs> Mr. Wong's dry green leaves have also been identified. So you were wrong about the, the grass? 
Yeah, it was wrong, mate. It was, it was um, some kind of Chinese herb. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm OK. I'm OK. I'll just have to put them in the room to make them up. Just leave me alone in peace, have me cigarette. How many packs? Six now. Not bad. Dreadful habits. It's now seven o'clock in the evening. Here they come. Hello. Sorry to see you. Sorry, sorry, sorry to see you. Just go up there, we've got all the keys up there waiting for you. It's full staff for 300 people, so. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's the start of it. What's this then? <laughs> Vegetable broth. What's that um, frothy bit on top, like? That's, that's the, the broth. That's the broth. Vegetable broth. As long as that's all it is. <laughs> I just need to go and get some more rooms. If you all want to go and have dinner, and then we'll sort you out with bedrooms. I have a feeling we will have complaints about this bed. This room, the room number, is very unusual. I don't think any other hotel in the whole entire world has got a room 666. The room number is 666, so it's a devil, devil's room. I'm not opening the dome, they've got to go put round the yard. Oh. They, can't, they can't unload into the, into the banquet and dome. Come into the fire the... exit. Backyard. Backyard. Eileen's still acting duty manager. Do you like being duty manager? No, I don't like being duty manager at all. Good night, slip tight. Whoever it might be. 666. Excuse me, can't bring that in. Excuse me, can't bring that into the building, sir. Excuse me? You can't bring takeaway food into the oh, building. Oh, okay, I'm just waiting for my daughter. Okay, if you could just stand outside and wait for your daughter, okay. thank you. Although Eileen's title's reduced, her standards haven't. Well, that is not suitable for the Adelphi. Beware of hazards at work, <laughs> waiters. <laughs> They should go back to where they come from. And I think a troglodyte lives in a cave, doesn't he? And I think that's the best place for them to be, in caves, because they are like, or behave like one would imagine the uh, Neanderthal would uh, react and act. Seriously? Seriously? What I say, better see, there's another one. First, honest to God, first what I said, vegeta is there a vegetarian alternative event? Yeah. This Sue Wall is going to invite me on Desert Island Discs. And she's going to say, what would you like to take with you? And I'm not going to really answer that, but I'm going to say, I know what I wouldn't like to take, and that would be a vegetarian or a waiter. I need a known care. With the meal underway, Eileen's backstage organising band arrivals for tonight's concert. Mark? Mark, you need to be at the front desk. You're not here for this. Right, like, there's people wanting luggage moved. I don't have porters for this, look. Do you want a plain piece of turkey? Yeah, have you got some? Oh, smashing, thank you. I used to be a choir boy. I used to have a cassock and rough in a, in a surplus. And I used to sing the Nunt Diminus and all that. And then my balls dropped. <laughs> then, and it's surprising then, you know, boy soprano is a baritone. One, one failed swoop. <laughs> Downstairs in the nightclub, the first of the Beatles look-alike groups is about to perform. Hello. 
Eileen's last task as duty manager is door duty. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have the attention, please? Breakfast tomorrow will be served from 7 o'clock in the same rooms that you had dinner. And then you will be boarding coaches to leave for the airport. OK, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Brian's now been on duty for 17 hours. Day one, I've given up on my cigarettes. I'm down to 10% of what I usually smoke. Because I usually smoke 60 and I've had five or six. So we've got another one to go. So 10% is all right. Although Brian can finally go home, Eileen's having to work through her wedding anniversary. The wife's got a ticket. There's all sorts of stories like that. No ticket, no win. They'll find your wife. At least she's spending her anniversary in the same place she spent her wedding night, the Adelphi. Five, six, seven, eight, that's fine. It's 6.45. The delayed passengers are having breakfast and Brian's starting his second day of not smoking. Sort all them bread rolls out into what they are, make signs for them, Rob. Just have this before the start. Make this last me the whole day long. <laughs> Straight away, please. George, do us a favour. I just saw that lad to wash some cups and saucers. Give me a hand. If I find you in here again, I want you out there all the time. Thank you, George. Eileen's given it to a guest so they can go out and buy one. Believe it or not. Well, yeah. Where did you buy crutches from? God knows. No, she sent one of the porters in earlier and said, Mrs. Downey said, can she lend one of your crutches for a guest? So I, I assumed he meant for them to get up the stairs. And two and a half hours on, it seems, he went to buy one. Better have it back then, not here. So you'll have to wheel me out to the toilet if you don't mind. One of the porters can do that. I think that's their job. I'm on with you. Have you seen a crutch? Pardon? A crutch. A crutch. A walking crutch. Oh. Are you sure? Yep. <laughs> Preparations can now begin to transform the passengers' breakfast room into a concert hall. In five hours' time, this room will be full of screaming fans and Beatles groups. Brian's been roped in to help with a different function. Are we going to lose the light? Which one are you under above? Uh, there would be great if you could. Oh, wait a minute. Where am I going to put it on to? A local company is holding a bridal wear fashion show using hotel staff as models. They need another couple. Brian's volunteered to elope with Katie. I've got a dress of it in the case. I like that as well. Look at these hips. <laughs> and then other things. <laughs> Eileen needs to find the crutch she lent to one of the passengers before he leaves for the airport. Looking for a crutch? Yeah. Oh dear. It's not very graceful with my pop socks, does it? Kate. With this ring, I do wear. I do. <laughs> oh, hello. Could I have my crutch back, please? Thank you very much. Have a wonderful holiday. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Bye now. Yo! Not yours. Just, just bear with me one minute. No, mine. 
You want to do words with the... Thing? Oh, he's just taken that off. He's lost it. He's done what? I've done my best. Look, just talk. I'll bring you more tomorrow. Okay. Okay, one moment, sir. <laughs> With the fashion show over and the banqueting hall transformed, the Beatles convention concert is about to start. Still the same three, quarter past two, from 5am in the morning. Not bad for me. I, I'd usually add 20 before it is. In fact, that shows her. Katie's honeymoon is short-lived. An unhappy guest has returned to reception. How can I help you? Um, this is the third time right. I've down and talked to people. Uh -huh. uh, One of the international look-alike bands is still rehearsing. See so the Beatles, are you? Four Spanish 11-year-olds. Eh? What are you going to sing? Un, dos, que mamilo! It's not very nice. It's not okay, not you, don't, nice you don't like the room. It's but not there is a nice, it is not there a is nice nothing room. wrong with that. It is not a, it is not a room. To you it's not a nice room. To other people it's a very nice room. Hey. I am sorry that I don't have anything I can move you to at all. I really don't. If I had, I would do, but I really so don't what's have anything. Your the alternative is I can find your alternative accommodation at another hotel, but I don't have well, I don't have anything here. There's absolutely no alternative. I'll tell you what the alternative is. What would you like me to do? You can drop the price. Well, I can't and tomorrow do that. night you can swap to some some, some mm -hmm. other one. Mm -hmm. And I want to guarantee no mm -hmm. you can do both those things. If there's anything that you want, if there's anything I can do. What would you like me to do? What would you like me to do? I want you to uh, to I was put somewhere else in the right. hotel and you said you can't. Right, so the next alternative is to reduce, uh, reduce the cost. And I'm not going to do that because you're already on a reduced tariff. Why should I reduce that? Reduce the cost? There's nothing wrong with your room. So what do you want me to do? Do you want me to sort of stay here all night and just walk around complaining to everybody and say, my room's awful? Would you like to come and have a look at my awful? No, I don't need to do that. Well, what do you I've want me to do? Right, I've, asked, I've asked you I've asked you what you want me to do. Look, this is a, this we're just going, going round in we're circles going, here. Yeah, we're going round in circles. <laughs> You're asking me what you want me to do. I've told you what you do. You say no, 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 no. I you give me an alternative. Right, I can't move you. I don't have any more bedrooms to move you to. I, I'm not the... going to reduce your bedroom rate because you're already on a reduced tariff. I'm not going to give you a complimentary meal. I'm not going to give you a complimentary garage. I've offered you another room in another hotel and you've said no, you're going to stand there. So what do you want oh. me to do? How long have you been in this job? I've been in this job for 17 years. Really? Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. When is your, when is your boss, Miss, Mrs. Downey? Mrs. Mrs. Downey, she'll be in from 9.30 in the morning. Can I have a chat with her tomorrow? You can do, but she will say exactly the same thing. It doesn't make thing. any difference. I just want to yeah, register, fine. register sure. the fact. Sure. No problem. Okay. Nine bands, 12 hours and three cigarettes later, one of Brian's friends has just made it harder for him to give up smoking. But she doesn't know I've tried to pack in smoking. So what's Saggy bring me in? Siggy's temptation. Are you going to succeed, Brian? I am. Come back in six months' time and I'll be probably about 20 stone, but healthy. But God love her, she didn't realise. And in this game, you diffuse not but blows. 
The gentleman who's checked into M12 is not very happy with the room, so is the room moving to, to 411? Mrs. Downey, Mr. McConnell, at reception. Right, it's on the way over to the next station. Uh, Mr. McConnell? Yeah, he was M12 and we moved him to call that. Oh, I'll give Miss Keeney, he said he'd just like to have a quick word. Katie! <laughs> Katie! Yes? 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 Mr. McConnell's at reception. He has been room moved. Yes. But, um, I'd like you to do all this as okay. the to house manager. Okay, There's no to... reason for me to see Mr. McConnell. Okay, he's asked to speak to you. He's asked to speak to me. Oh, Sorry. Right, okay. I've removed him and given him He's in 411. All right. Just... Basically, I think he thinks it's just a little bit too small, and also it's quite dull as well because there's only half a window there, so I think he wants something a bit bigger with a, with a bit more light. Mr. McConnell? Yes. Hi, thank you for here again. Do you want to see the Yeah. Yes, okay. That's I think it's better, it's bigger, and it's got a full-size window, so it's a bit brighter for him. Bigger, better, yeah. Make him feel a bit more in, important. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to Mrs Downey in writing, all by fax, all by phone, and I'll talk to her boss as well. Fine, OK. okay. Because the outcome is wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got what we wanted. Right. But the way it was done last night, we weren't happy with, really. Well, you weren't happy because you didn't get what you wanted. You didn't get any compensation, and I don't see why I needed to give you any sort of comp compensation just because you didn't like your bedroom. See, so already you're being confrontational, and no, I've just, I've just, said, I've just made a statement. I've just made a statement. I'm passing the information along the mm -hmm. line. That's all. That's okay. But thank you very much. It's uh, it's exactly what we wanted. Unfortunately, it was 18 hours a bit late. That's all. Well, unfortunately, yeah. we didn't have any rooms yeah, that we could put you in. All right. Yeah. Cheers. Okay. Thank you. He's just a nuisance. Like I said to him last night, you're a nuisance, Mr. McConnell. So, what kind of tree is this? It's a, a fig, a weeping fig. Um, can be a cigarette tree. The hotel is without being receptionist Christine. She spent this year's Beatles convention on a maternity ward. Hey, Ma. Oh, it's a girl. Oh, oh made up, made up. What does she wear? Oh, what are you going to call her? Oh, oh, well, hang on, I'll have to tell everybody. Hang on a minute, hang on. This one won't do it so much harm, it's a menthol. <laughs> oh, this hotel is like a drug. Um, everybody's been here for so long and everybody works well together, everybody knows everybody else and you either love it or you hate it and you, you have a love-hate relationship with this hotel. Time for another city. Brian's failed in his attempt to stop smoking. How's your health? Yeah, it keeps me going though, doesn't it? I don't need... But he's now been promoted to deputy manager. The new baby's been named Ellis. And Christine is due back at the Adelphi in the new year. A row between a vegetarian and a turkey lover. Let's not get chef involved. Leave it to Gillian Cleary on BBC Two now. Coming up next on BBC One, Pierce Brosnan in the action-packed thriller Death Train.